about a month ago, I dropped a video called Build Your Own UI Component that talked a lot about kind of how class variance authority work and merging CSS classes together to essentially make yourself a nice reusable uh, component. However, one of the top comments of this video was this, I thought you were going to show us how to make a package like Shatzien that we could like NPM install into any project, like a reusable component like that, which I didn't do. And I thought, oh crap, that's actually a really good idea. So I thought in this episode, what if we have a little bit of fun with Hano and maybe with Cloudflare workers and we try to like deploy our own registry. I thought that would be quite a fun like learning experience as well, kind of see how Shad's and does stuff under the hood. Uh, so what we'll be able to do is essentially host our own static JSON files in a specific format. So if I go here to slash R, as you can see, this is our registry uh, and I have one button here. So if I go to slash R slash button now, it's going to spit out this whole component in a JSON format here that we can just copy into our project. So we're going to be building this out with Cloudflare workers and Hano, which is awesome. I really like it. And now check this out. If I, for example, here, this is a new tan stack start project. I'll delete the UI here. So I don't have anything in there as you can see. And now what I can simply do is in this new project, for example, I can go here and say, uh, MPX Shatzian latest add. And then I'm going to hit my registry to add that button. And here we go. We'll run this command and look at that. It created that file. So now if we head over here to the button, I'm going to turn word wrap on and look at that. There it is. We can use it in our project. Before we get going, we'll also have to thank today's sponsor. They're absolutely brilliant. Tutorials are great, but when you hit a bug or a complex feature, you need more than just to be able to follow steps. You need to actually be able to think like a programmer. That's why I've been loving Brilliant. It's an awesome platform that helps you build a deeper understanding with interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and even AI. So you're not just passively watching videos, you're actively solving problems, which honestly is the most effective way to learn anything new. I highly recommend you to check out the course Thinking in Code. Uh, it's packed with a bunch of fun puzzles and it actually builds up on the fundamentals of programming, which is really cool. My favorite part is that whether you're on your computer or you just got a few minutes on your phone, doing a quick brilliant lesson keeps your mind sharp and helps you build a solid learning habit without feeling overwhelmed. So if you want to boost your problem solving skills, I highly recommend you to check out Brilliant. You can try everything they offer, including the Thinking of Code course for free for a full 30 days. If you visit the link down in the description below, you can also scan the QR code here and you'll also get 20% off your annual subscription. All right, let's get cracking. So for this project, we are going to be using Hano. I absolutely love it. Being able to use any JavaScript runtime just feels like breaking the chains loose, you know, really freeing. So highly recommend you to check it out. So let's create a little Hano app that allows us essentially to serve these JSON static files uh, that are in a specific format that lets us after that being able to use the chat CN command to essentially pull it back in to our project or a new project. Okay, so let's start. So we can use pmpm create hono and let's call this registry. Okay, the registry, let's say, let's call it custom registry. Here it's going to ask us to select a template. We're just going to be using Cloudflare workers. We're not going to be needing Vite as we're just serving static files. Uh, for the dependencies, we're going to say yes. And uh, I'm going to be using pmpm for this. And there we go. Okay, so let's have a look at the project structure here. So as you can see, we have a Wrangler file here that we can customize, like something like observability. If you wanna add AI features, if you wanna hook up a database in here, you can do all of that jazz. What we're specifically looking for doing here is hooking up our assets, our static assets. Uh, but we're gonna get back to this in just a second. Then we have our TS config file here, and let's open up the source as well. As you can see, we're serving up one route here, which is the home route, that's going to say hello Hano. So if we also check our package JSON, as you can see, we have a dev command here that we can run, which is Wrangler dev. So we can hop in and try this out. So npm run dev, let's make sure uh, that route is served up here for us. Hey, oh, it's another one. Fair enough, fair enough, you got me. There we go, hello Hano. All right, we're good. 
Next up, what I actually want to do is install ChatCN here. So pmpm add ChatCN, and we'll be able to actually use ChatCN CLI to generate those static JSON files. So we don't need to set up like a custom script here to convert that over when we have this already in the CLI ready to use. So now create any component that you want. So I'm going to do that in the source. We have the index there, but I'm going to make a custom registry slash UI slash button TSX in here. So let's create that. And here we go. I just pasted in a button here that I was using before that has some custom stylings on it. You can install here in this specific project if you want React and Redux UI as a dev dependency to try it out here. And if you want the nice autocompletes and everything, but this is fine like it is for now and then we can just simply convert it over. Next up, what I want to do is essentially create a registry JSON file uh, that points to all my TSX components and being able to take all of that information and then essentially generate those JSON files. So what we need to do is in the home page here, we need to create a new component called registry.json. And it's going to look something like this, where you need to pass in a schema as the first argument. And that needs to be the ChatCN schema because it follows a specific format uh, that we need to conform to. The name here, you can add a custom name as well for the home page. You can add a custom description as well. But this is like the meat of it here is the item. Items, I should say, plural, where you can pass a name, the type of registry. So this is a component, for example, because you can also create hooks and and a bunch of other utility functions if you want in here uh, that you can also expose. But you can add a title, a description. So I just added a simple something here. And then the path. This is the most important bit here that you need to add into an object. So that needs to point to that registry button TSX here, not to your JSON. OK, and then you finally pass in a type as well. And doing all of this now, we should be able to head into our package.json. And what I'm going to do here is pass in the command pmpm exec. And I want to execute the chat CN command here like that. And essentially what I want to do is build it in a specific folder. Now I can pass in the O flag here and then simply point it to let's do dot slash like that. I'm sorry, I don't need the, the quotation marks dot slash. Let's do it in maybe the dist folder like that slash R. OK, so let's hit save as like R for registry. And now for my def command, I essentially want to call the registry first. I'm going to say pmpm run build registry, and then I'm going to call my Wrangler def here. This already points to the source index, so I don't think I need that like that. And let's give that a try. So let's go here, close this up. I'm going to run npm run dev. There we go. As you can see, it runs that commands first, first, and it should build it to the dist folder. So if we have a look now, we should have a dist r with the button.json right in there. And look at that. We have all of our data saved here following the specific uh, format here, the registry item JSON. There we go, all ready to go. OK, I'm in my index.ts now. And essentially what I want to do is set up a route that when you hit slash r slash button or input, it serves up that JSON file for us. So let's hit head here. I'm going to say app.get. I'm going to pass, pass slash slash r. And then here I can add like a dynamic value. If I add uh, the double dots, the colon, colon is what it's called. I'm going to pass a name here. And then for the second argument, I'm going to have a function here uh, that's going to give me the context. Now in here, what I essentially want to do is pull out the name, right? So whether it's a button there or an input, whatever it is, right? So we can do that. Let's call this component name. And you can do that from C request dot. Uh, what was it? C request param, there we go. And then in here, I can call name like that. So now let's do a try catch here in case this fails. I'm going to catch the error. There we go. So let's call this asset path. I'm going to do backticks component name dot JSON, right? Because we want the, the JSON format. Now let's create a URL. So I'm going to call this asset URL. I'm going to set this equal to a new URL request. And then I'm going to say C dot request.url, right, to get the like root URL. So in this case, it's localhost, but when it goes up on Cloudflare, it's going to be something completely different. So on this new asset URL, what we're going to do is do the path name on it and set it equal to the asset path up here. OK, there we go. Save. Cool. Now what we need to do is actually fetch this asset 
from the static files in the worker, in the Cloudflare workers. So we have a path to it that we can like request, but we're currently not like setting up. So like in Cloudflare, we're gonna do nothing to essentially add this button JSON and mark it as, hey, this needs to be statically exported. So what we can do is head into your Wrangler JSON here and we can set that up. So let's also add this compatibility flags here, Node.js v2. That's a good thing to have observability as well. So you can see kind of how your uh, APIs are getting hit. But this is the most important thing that you actually need in here. Let me paste this over here is this assets. So make sure this points over to dot slash this slash R or wherever you have these JSON file formats. The binding needs to be asset. And then this not found handling, we don't even need that for now. We can just save that. So make sure the binding is on assets and this is on this slash R. So now what we can do is head back here and we can also run npm run CF type gen, which is going to attach now that assets fetcher uh, onto the EMV process which is super cool because then we can go back here and essentially link it up and have it access on the context. Now here's the cool part. We can simply head back into our index.ts now and add a little generic here with the bindings on the HANO app where we can simply import in this Cloudflare binding. So just pass this down. There we go. It's going to be an interface. And now what we can do is simply fetch that. So now all the bindings are attached on the context here. So I can do something like this. Const response is going to be equal to, I'm going to say await c.emv.assets. Look at that. There it is. It popped up. We're going to fetch. I'm going to make a new request here. And what do we want to fetch? Well, the asset URL. There we go. So let's pass that down. Now here I can check if the response status is 200. I can instantly do a new response and send that text back as a JSON format. Else here, I'm simply going to just return an error saying, hey, there's no there's no component found, right? And then here we can also catch an error. Uh, I'll simply pass down something like this. I'll just call, call c.json on it and say failed to retrieve a component. And that's like essentially it. So we should be able to hit here slash r slash button, for example, and that should be able to hit it. So let's go and restart this npm run dev. Give that a go. So if we simply head here and hit enter now, slash r slash button, it don't work. I kid you not, I was trying to run this for like 20 minutes and it wasn't working. I was like, what the hell? I, why? It's because here, look, <laughs> it's slash r slash and then you need another slash there. Uh-oh, uh-oh, SpaghettiO. Try not to make little mistakes like that. But look at now, when we <laughs> refresh it, it all works. It's all here. And that's essentially all you need to do, right? You're ready to, to party now. So what we want to do is push this up right from local uh, live to a public URL where we can just simply host it and install it in any other project. Okay, so all we, all we really need to do is go here and set up a build command. For the build command, you can just simply come here and do something like this, where we run the registry again at the beginning. I always do this at the beginning. And then we run Wrangler deploy, and then I do the minify, and I point it to index.ts because that's where the uh, entry point is. Okay, after running the deploy, we should have a command here that we can simply co copy over. Let's try to run this and look at that. Hello, Hano, this is live. You can check it out, slash r slash button. Let's hit this endpoint and there we go. So let's copy this command over. And what we're gonna do is do a test run here. Let's do a example project. So I'm gonna be running the command pmpx create start at latest. This is a really cool, I'm, I'm so happy everyone's doing tan stack start now, I'm not gonna lie. So this is, I believe, uh, uh, Jack Harrington's working on this together with uh, Tanner Lensley, and I really like it. So if you want a quick project with Tanstack Start, this is a great way to do it. Also, WebDev Cody has been doing a lot of content uh, with Tanstack Start, uh, so he's a really good one to check out as well. Um, okay, so let's run this, give it a go. I'm going to instantiate a new project here. And again, the whole thing that we're going to need is Again, I'm just going to need chat CN. We're not even going to need chat CN in this project because you can just MPX and call the CLI tool to actually install it. So let's do LS. What did I call this? Examples. So let's head into the examples, clear this out. Let's run NVim here and have a quick look. Okay, so there we go. That's all we have. We have a source, components, but nothing else really. 
Okay, now in this project, simply let's do npx chat cn at latest, add, and then just post in your registry worker that you have pointing to the button. Hit enter. Let's wait a second. Boom, look at that. There we go. We are uh, screaming. <laughs> Where are you? Uh, there we go. And now if we head in here, we can check the UI. And there we go. We got the button. And the only thing is like, see the dependencies here that you need to make sure that you have. I believe you can also customize that in the registry if you want to have a deeper look into that. But that's it. As long as your imports here are fine. I mean, this is just a simple React component that has been installed to your project. So there we go. That's, that's just as easy as it is. Hope you enjoyed this little episode. Please consider dropping a little like and a little subscribe. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. You have a lovely day.